Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So today we're going to talk about Cricut Iron-On and the basics of application. Everything from one color to two colors to three and layering heat transfer vinyl. This video is sponsored by Cricut, however all projects and opinions are my own. So the first thing we need to cover, Cricut Iron-On and heat transfer vinyl are two names for the exact same thing. So Cricut calls their brand of heat transfer vinyl iron-on, but you might pick up heat transfer vinyl from other places and it goes by the name of like HTV. This tutorial applies to both types because it is the same thing. And we're gonna grab our Cricut machine, our Cricut Easy Press, cut some iron-on and then apply it to some tote bags. It's just a basic tutorial of how to apply iron-on. So first we'll do the single layer but stay tuned, so if you've ever wondered how to do two different colors or three different colors and layer iron-on on, on top of each other, so one layer on top of another one, this video is for you. So we're gonna go through the basics of how to do that on a simple tote bag, but you can apply this to any project that you would like. So if you are a beginner and just starting out, and using Cricut Iron-On for the first time, this video is definitely for you. Let's get started with that single layer design. So the supplies you're gonna need are as follows. You will need a tote bag. I'm gonna use this 14 by 19 inch tote bag from Cricut. Now, this is an infusible ink compatible blank. We're gonna put Iron-On on top of it. That is fine. So you can get this tote bag or any other tote bag, or you can use the same procedure for shirts as well. And then you'll need your Cricut machine. Any Cricut machine will work. Now, if you have the joy, you may not be able to make your designs as large for the tote bags, but you can cut iron-on. And then you'll need iron-on, of course. So I have a variety of colors laid out here. I'm just gonna pick colors that I think will look good with my design and with my bag and use those. And then you'll need a weeding tool, your Easy Press mat, as well as your Easy Press. I'm gonna use my nine by nine. I feel like that's what most people have. And I'm gonna make some of my designs at least larger than the nine by nine. So you, I can show you how to press larger designs even with the smaller Easy Press. And then I have a blue mat on the bottom down here. I do have a large 12 by 24 mat because I think some of my designs may require that. If you keep your designs within 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches, you only need the 12 by 12 mat. So I will note that. So first let's head to design space and let's take a look at the first tote bag. So we're gonna make three tote bags. The first one we're gonna make using just a single color of iron-on on, on a tote bag. Second one, we're gonna use two colors on a tote bag. And third one, we're gonna layer with three colors. So let's head to design space and take a look at our first design. All right, so let's take a look at our first tote bag design. So for this one, we're just gonna do one layer of HTV just to get down the basics. So I'm gonna go to images and I'm going to type summertime and we're gonna use this image. However, if you scroll a little bit further down, sometimes in design space, there are ones that are one color of the same image. So for this one, let's use this version and We'll go ahead and uncheck this one and insert this image. Now to resize, we can pull this arrow or we can type a specific size into the box at the top. Once we get it the size we want, we'll click make it. And before you click make it, you always wanna make sure your machine of choice is displayed in this dropdown. And then we'll click make it. And since we're using iron-on, we always want to mirror our cut. So I will click mirror and continue. Now we can connect our machine, cut our iron-on and apply it to our tote bag. Let's start with how to apply your iron-on to the mat. So the first thing on any mat, there will be a clear protective cover and we can just tear that off. So let's talk about first a trick for applying to the mat. So I opened up my machine and I'm just gonna put the mat up under the machine and I'm gonna put my roll on my tray. 
And now all I have to do is line up this end piece onto the mat. Make sure that's lined up. And then you can use a scraper, you can use your hands, pull the mat out and press down as you go. And you may notice like I got this a little bit crooked. So now all I have to do is pick up this little piece, repeat, get that as straight as possible, and that is much better. So I'll just keep pulling the mat out, smoothing it down with my hands. And the second thing you'll notice is this is the same color on both sides. How do I know which color to apply to the mat? See how this side is shiny? It's always shiny side down on the mat. And that's why you mirror your design. So we talked about mirroring and that's the reason why. So now I've put this whole 12 by 24 sheet onto my mat. And now it's time to cut with our Cricut. Iron-On uses the fine point blade which comes with every Cricut machine. And you can do this a couple of different ways. The Explore has a dial and you can set that dial to Iron-On to cut iron-on material. However, you can also set it to custom and you can pick iron-on right in Design Space on your computer or mobile device. If you have a Maker or a Joy, then there will be no dial and basically they're always set to custom so you always pick your material in Design Space. If you have an Explore, feel free to do it either way. So now let's cut our first design. Now you just insert your mat making sure it's under the white guides on both sides. Push the mat slightly so it's up against the rollers. And at the same time as you're pushing, press the arrow button to load your mat. That will load it into your machine. At that point, the go button will start flashing and you just click it to start cutting. Once your machine is done cutting, the arrow will start flashing again. You just press it to unload your mat. And now let's take a look at how to weed, iron on, and apply to our tote bag. The easiest way to remove material from your mat is actually to flip your mat over and peel your mat back from the material. It's actually much easier to do it that way and on things like paper it helps it to curl up less. Now you need to weed the iron on with all the excess. So I have this still shiny side down. I like to start picking it up in the corner because usually I don't have a design in the very corner. So you just pick it up and there's a clear backing sheet which is where the shiny side comes in. And you can start peeling back the iron on. Just peel the iron on back from that clear sheet and you will start seeing your design where your Cricut machine has cut it. I'm going to continue peeling this back. Revealing the design we have cut. For any stubborn areas like these insides of these M's, you can see the cut lines generally, so you can just kind of pick up on those areas just to peel them back. Then what I can also do down here is just use my scissors and trim away this excess, and that way I have the rest of the sheet for another cut. Then once I've trimmed away that excess from the bottom, you do want to get things like the centers of your letters and any internal portions of the design you're working on. So anything you don't want pressed to your tote bag in this case needs to come off of this piece. And just to note that this sheet is sticky so it'll help hold it into place as we iron it onto our tote bag. Then once we have everything cut, it's time to press this on our tote bag. All right, so here's our tote bag. The first thing to talk about is the easy press mat. So what I like to do on a tote is put the easy press mat inside my tote. And I do have another larger easy press mat under my tote bag to protect my work surface. For this one, you could definitely just use a folded up towel. You don't have to have an easy press mat in that case. But I do recommend the easy press mat inside if at all possible. 
And now what we're gonna do is just kind of press the surface to get out any wrinkles, moisture, that type of thing. Only needs to be a few seconds. Now the time and the temperature that I have set on my Easy Press may vary from what you need. So this is the time and temperature for Cricut brand of iron-on on polyester fabric because this is polyester. You will want to look up the manufacturer of your HTV or iron-on and what time and temperature they recommend. So for Cricut, I would recommend you just use the Cricut heat guide. Super easy to use and will tell you exactly what you need to set your Easy Press for. So now you just need to locate your design onto your tote. And then I'm gonna adjust that Easy Press mat to make sure it's under my design. And it is. Now, because this is polyester, you might wanna protect the fabric because I'm gonna be pressing this at 315 for 30 seconds, which might be a lot for polyester. You can lay a piece of parchment paper over the top. I have this Teflon sheet that I'm gonna lay over the top either way. And then the other thing is I'm using a smaller Easy Press. So I'll probably press this in a couple of different sections. So I'm just gonna cover the section that I'm pressing and then move everything as I go. So we're just gonna set down the protective sheet set down the easy press and press the green button and allow it to start counting down as we press down on the easy press and I'll just continue this for all the areas of the tote bag and then we'll talk about removing that top sheet Now for polyester and the Cricut brand, it does recommend that you flip this over and press from the back. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove the mat. I'm gonna flip the entire thing over, add it to my mat just this way. Go ahead and put this over the top just in case. And we're gonna press for about 15 seconds in each area. Now the Cricut iron-on is cool peel, so I wanna let this cool completely before I remove this protective sheet. And taking the Easy Press mat out from the bottom will help it cool a little faster. So we're gonna allow this to cool. All right, so now this is cool to the touch. And what you wanna do is just start peeling this back at an angle. And you're just gonna watch and make sure that the iron-on is staying on your tote bag. If it's not, you can replace this liner and you can repeat the pressing process. Everything looks really good with mine, so I'll just continue to lift mine up and off of the tote bag. So now this tote bag is done. So this is how easy it is to do one color on a tote bag. So now that we've tackled one color, Let's tackle two. So the next bag we're gonna make has two colors applied to it. And we're gonna learn about the technique of doing this where we can press both of these colors at one time. So let's head to Cricut Design Space and see how to make this. So now that we've cut our first tote bag design, let's look at doing a tote bag with two colors. So again, I'm going to go to images. I would type summertime again. And this time I'm going to pick the one with several different colors and insert them. Now I have my design, but I said two colors and this is four colors. So how do we get it to two colors? You would want to pick each of the elements you wanna change. So let's say the time I want to change to yellow and let's say the clouds, we'll pick them over here. I want to change to black. So now I have a two color image that I could cut on my machine. And now I'm also going to get rid of this version so I can show you something that's gonna happen. So now we're gonna click make it. And as you can see, our designs aren't lined up anymore. So they're all over the mat. They're not lined up like they were on the previous screen. How do we fix that? So let's go back. 
So what we're gonna need to do is ungroup these in order to make this work. So we're going to choose the entire group and click ungroup at the top. Now we have four separate pieces. What we wanna do is pick the first yellow piece. And I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna pick my second yellow piece. And then I'm going to click attach. I'm gonna repeat with the black pieces in this case. I'm gonna click attach. And now if I click make it, you will see that the pieces stayed in the same location as they were on our screen. And as always, we're going to use iron-ons. We want to mirror both of these before we cut. Now, these colors, when we're talking about in design space, so I made these black and yellow. I can cut these out of black and yellow, or I can choose a different color when I go to cut. The color of the iron-on will just depend on what you put on the mat, so feel free to pick whatever colors you want. But if you have a hard time visualizing that, you can go back to design space over here and we'll pick that group that we attach. So if we click on the word attach here, both of those layers highlight and we could change those to a different color. So I have a hard time visualizing what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna change these to pink and purple and see if I like that color scheme. I could even choose a different purple and see if I liked that. If these colors don't work for you, you can always click this plus sign and you can pick any color from this drop down, and it will change on your screen. This gives you the ability to change the colors to whatever you want and visualize it on your screen. So this is super helpful if you have an iron-on color that isn't really represented up here in, these top, in this top menu. You can go ahead and play around and pick a color that's similar to what you're seeing with the iron-on that you've purchased and then better visualize it on your screen as far as what it will look like on your tote bag. So if that helps you to visualize your project, please feel free to go ahead and change your colors right in Design Space. So now we'll click Make It Again. We will mirror our design. So you'll, you do need to mirror every time. So you'll notice I clicked Make It before. I mirrored my design, then I went back out and made changes. I have to mirror again before cutting. And now I can click Continue connect my explore and cut both of these layers. And then we'll take a look at how to press them to a tote bag. For the two color tote bag, we're gonna repeat the same cutting procedure as we did with the one color and cut both colors for our design. Now that this is done cutting, we can weed it and apply our two color design. All right, so for the two color version of the tote bag, I already weeded the iron on because the process is the same. So for the two color, we're gonna talk about one process and for the three color, we're gonna need to actually layer on top of each other. This one doesn't layer on top of each other, correct? So the two colors are actually separate colors and I just kind of have them stuck together just for illustration purposes, but they are two different colors and the design doesn't touch each other at any portion, so we should be able to lay them on top of one another. So I'm gonna move this tote bag just a second, so maybe we can see this pretty good. All right, so the trick here, first of all, if I have the same iron-on brand and type for both of these, so they are both Cricut Everyday Iron-on. If you have two different brands or types, look them both up and set your easy press to the one that is the hottest or the longest time. That way you will get the at least that one stuck down and a little extra heat on the other. So now what is going to happen is I'm going to put these on on at the same time. So we're going to talk about putting two colors on at the same time for this one and then we'll go into needing to separate them for the next one. So what you do to put two colors on at the same time is you need to make sure that the 
carrier sheet for the lower one. So we're gonna make the purple the lower or the one that's on the underside. You need to make sure that it doesn't touch the pink at any point. So to do that, the easiest thing to do, this carrier sheet, I'm gonna trim it pretty close in all areas to the cut design. And then we're gonna put it back on there and we're gonna see if it overlaps any place and see if we need to trim some more. But the what, how I start is I just trim it fairly close all the way around. And make it a little closer on this side. But I do still wanna leave them connected. So the sun is in the proper location on this cut, so I don't wanna take those, cut those apart if I can keep from it. So now I have my bottom layer, and we'll just add this top layer over the top. And what I can see right now is this bird is between the sun and the summer, and I'm gonna to need to cut more for this cloud. So let's cut in for the cloud. And then I'm actually gonna cut a hole in it for that bird. So I just, I really, really want to keep these located together. So I'm gonna cut a hole in the center of this for the bird and leave kind of two strips on both sides so that the summer is properly located to that sun. All right, so with a little patience and my scissors, I was able to get these both together and the carrier sheets don't overlap in any place. So I trimmed the purple to where the pink doesn't touch it anywhere. So this is one way to press two colors at one time, even though they're inside one another like this. So now let's press it to our tote bag. So we're gonna repeat the same procedure for pressing to our tote bag. So once again, I have my easy press mat inside my tote bag and then another easy press mat underneath, but you can use a folded up towel underneath there. And then we're gonna locate our design on the tote bag. And then once again, I like to cover up with this sheet. And because these are all the, both the same, I'm using the same time and temperature as before. But again, I would use the Cricut heat guide to make sure you're getting the right time and temperature. And because this is so large, I will press it four times all the way around. Then we'll turn it over, press from the back, and peel away the carrier sheet. Now we'll flip it over to the back, remove, that easy press mat, press from the back for about 15 seconds. We'll let this cool completely before we peel back the carrier sheets. And now that this is cool, we can just start peeling back the same as we did last time, making sure that everything's stuck. Now, both carrier sheets might come up at once, but it's okay if they do not. So this one is not, and I'll just peel one and then peel the other. It's not that big of a deal. And there you have using two colors of iron-on without actually layering on the top of each other. And finally, you might be wondering how to layer Cricut iron-on. Can, can you do layers? Can you put one layer on top of one another? Let's dive in and make a bag with iron-on that's been layered one layer on top of another. For our third tote bag, let's take a look at adding a layer. So in reality, this is two different colors of iron-on. However, we just placed them kind of side by side. We didn't layer anything on top of something else. For this version, I want to add a layer. So let's add a shape into Design Space and let's change it to a color. You can, again, play with these colors, whatever color of iron-on you have, pick that, see what it looks like, then pick something else and I'm gonna arrange and send it back. Now you take a look and do you like it? Do you like the way it looks? So first of all, I, I do understand like, maybe I'll get this a little off center just to exaggerate, but Cricut Design Space is not gonna cut 
these layers together. It's going to cut them on different canvases. So in actuality, it doesn't matter if this is a little off center. We're just looking to see if we like the look of the circle around here. Do we want to make it a little larger, a little smaller? So just play around with the circle itself and if you like the way it looks around your design. So it is going to be under our design. So what color would you like it to be? Again, you can play around with that in design space and you can play around with the color of the pieces themselves. Once you get it to the colors that you like or you have picked your colors of iron on and you're ready to cut, then once again, we're going to click make it and we're going to cut our designs. Once again, all of these will want to click mirror. And I like to get in the habit of mirroring all of my mats, even the circle. So technically when I mirror this circle, nothing really happens because it's already a round object that is the same on both sides. But if you get in the habit of mirroring every time, hopefully you won't miss the mirror as often when you're cutting your projects. So now I'm gonna click continue and we're gonna to head to our Explore and cut our pieces. Now we'll take a look at weeding and applying the three colors. Now it's time to layer our design. So I have my circle cut, I have everything weeded, and these two I did the same as the last tote bag. So I trimmed the carrier sheet of the purple so that we can press these two at the same time. But first, let's talk about layering. Preheating our surface just like always. So I'm gonna use everyday iron-on for all three layers, which is great. You can use other types and layer them on top of one another, but your bottom layer doesn't need to be like glitter, foil, things like that. You don't want to layer on top of glitter especially. So glitter would need to be your top layer if you're layering one on top of one another to get proper adhesion. So this circle is going to get pressed twice. It's going to get pressed once now and then again when we lay our iron on on top. So for this first press, we are going to do a short press. That means we're gonna do about half the time because we just wanna get it stuck down enough to put our second or third or whatever layer on top. And we do this because the iron-on and your surface can actually shrink when you heat it and you want to minimize that for layer designs. So for this first layer, I'm gonna get it in location and then I'm gonna press it for about 15 seconds. I'm gonna repeat the same thing with protecting everything. But this time, I'm just gonna press about 15 seconds and move it. All right, that also means we're not gonna press from the back. So we're gonna allow this to cool, and then we're gonna peel this carrier sheet back and add our layers to the top. Then once this is cool, we'll just start peeling back the carrier sheet. And this time, just watch it really close to make sure you have it stuck down. Just needs to be well and good enough to stay until we press for the second time. We're gonna layer right over the top. So we'll just locate this next design. And remember, I have these together just like I did in the last one where the carrier sheets don't overlap so I can press them at one time just to save a little bit of time. All right, and then we'll press in the same way, this time for the full time, just like if we were pressing one layer. I did wanna note here, like something like this with these handles, you don't wanna get your easy press on the handles themselves because it can raise it up and you'll have less heat in those areas. So do watch that on things like tote bags, um, onesies are bad about that because of the seams, things like that. And this time we will remove that mat from the inside, flip it over, and press from the back as well. Then once everything's cool, you can start peeling back the carrier sheet. Once again, they both may come up at once. This one is not, so I'll just peel the sub the purple separate from that aqua color. And 
Now one last thing I don't notice in this one but it happens sometimes. So the carrier sheet from the purple might leave a mark where it was cut. If it does, just put your Teflon sheet or parchment paper over the top and press for about 10 seconds in each area and it should lift those like little press marks out of like your pink HTV. I don't actually see it on this one so I'm not gonna do it, but that's how you would correct that. So there you have layering HTV on a tote bag. So there you have it. Three ways to use Cricut Iron-On to make a tote bag or any other project that you would like to make. So I hope this helps you kind of understand the basics of Iron-On, how to use it with your Cricut machine and how to press it in these different scenarios. So whether you are wanting to start out simple with one layer or whether you have a design and you think, boy, that would look great with two or more colors, I hope this video helps you understand how to make that project for the first time and be successful in making it. So if you have any questions about anything we've covered, please feel free to drop down in the comment section and ask away. If you liked this video, if it helped you, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have Cricut videos every week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. Until next time, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.